All right, so in this video, I'm going to be solving the equation x to the power of 16 minus 169 is equal to 0. So my only variable in this equation is x, so that's obviously what I'm going to be solving for. And now, for my solution, I'm going to first rewrite my equation down here so I have a little more solvent space. So I have x to the power of 16 minus 169 is equal to 0. And I can rewrite x to the power of 16 as x to the power of 8 times 2. And I can rewrite 169 as 13 squared. Now, the reason I rewrote x to the power of 8 times 2, or sorry, x to the power of 16 as x to the power of 8 times 2, is because now I can use the property that states that a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 8 times 2 is going to be x to the power of 8 to the power of 2, according to this property. Now this minus 13 squared is equal to 0. Now I'm going to use another property of algebra that states that if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is equal to x to the power of 8 and b is equal to 13. So I get x to the power of 8 plus 13 times x to the power of 8 minus 13 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of 8 plus 13 is equal to 0. And I get x to the power of 8 minus 13 is equal to 0. So, let's first solve x to the power of 8 minus 13 equals 0. So, this is the same thing as x to the power of 4 times 2 minus the square root of 13 squared is equal to 0. And also, if you're wondering why I'm not solving it like this, by adding 13 and taking the 8th root on both sides, well, this is because... This method doesn't give me all my solutions. It just gives me two solutions. And there are much more than two solutions for this equation, which is why I have to rewrite this and solve this a different way. So now I can use the property that states that a to the power of m times n is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. And rewrite x to the power of 4 times 2 as x to the power of 4 to the power of 2. Now I have this minus the square root of 13 squared. Now again, remember a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this is going to equal x to the power of 4 plus the square root of 13 times x to the power of 4 minus the square root of 13, which is equal to 0. And now, this gives me another two equations. So I have x to the power of 4 plus the square root of 13 is equal to 0, and x to the power of 4 minus the square root of 13 is equal to 0. So now, for x to the power of 4 minus the square root of 13 equals 0, I can rewrite this as x to the power of 2 times 2 minus the fourth root of 13 squared is equal to 0. So now this turns into x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 minus the fourth root of 13 to the power of 2 is equal to 0, which gets me 
x to the power of 2 plus the fourth root of 13 times x to the power of 2 minus the fourth root of 13 is equal to 0. And now this should be our last time, but we get another two equations. So I have x squared plus the fourth root of 13 is equal to 0, and x squared minus the fourth root of 13 is equal to 0. So now this turns into x squared minus the eighth root of 13 squared. And now I have x plus the eighth root of 13 times x minus the eighth root of 13, which is equal to zero. And I get x plus the eighth root of 13 is equal to zero and x minus the eighth root of 13 is equal to zero. So now that we're done with all of this, let's go back to our first equation here, x to the power of eight plus 13 equals zero. Well, if I subtract 13 on both sides, I get x to the power of eight equals negative 13. And you can't take the power of a positive number and make it equal negative. So this equation has no solution. Now going down here, the same thing. I get negative square root of 13 is equal to x to the power of four. So there's no solution to that. And same for this, and same for this as well. So I'm left with x minus the eighth root of 13 equals zero. And if I add eighth root of 13 on both sides, I get x is equal to the eighth root of 13. And this is positive or negative eighth root of 13. So these are my two solutions. And just so you know, Although these equations don't have any real solutions, they do have imaginary solutions.